That's Eddie Palmieri, his song Puerto Rico. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As a federal investigation into Saturday's foiled Times Square car bombing attempt continues, here in New York, a different sort of debate is underway. Who was the first person to sound the alarm bell about the smoke rising from the Nissan Pathfinder parked on one of Manhattan's busiest street corners? Most of the media have focused on two street vendors who are veterans of the Vietnam War. But there's a third vendor who says he was the first person to notice the smoke rising out of the car parked right in front of his table and alert others. Unlike the other vendors on the block, he's received barely any attention for his efforts. Alion Yas is an immigrant from the West African nation of Senegal and an observant Muslim. Democracy Now!'s Anjali Comet went to Times Square yesterday and filed this report. They've been hailed as the heroes of Times Square. Two street vendors, both Vietnam War veterans, each say they were the first to alert police to the smoking SUV near the corner of 45th Street and 7th Avenue last Saturday. Lance Orton and Dwayne Jackson have both been interviewed on network news shows and both received phone calls from President Obama thanking them for their vigilance. And what was great about it is he didn't let a secretary call me. He called me. So that made my day. So I'm walking on air. The president and the mayor in the same day. That makes it all worthwhile. Well, he said, thank you very much. I appreciate what you did. The whole country does and, the, and New Yorkers and that uh, thank you for your diligence and in uh, acting so fast and uh, being uh, a good American. But a third vendor, a Muslim immigrant from Senegal, says he was really the first person to notice the smoking car and alert other vendors. I'm the first person who saw. Look at this. They showed me this is my table right here. I don't know how long he gonna see this. You see his table over there. He see he was sit there. He will show the bad size. Look at this. This is my table right here. This one right here. This is you see the car. This is my car. The car right here. I don't know. So when I come in the morning, they tell me length. He said he saw the car first. Oh, I'm so surprised. I'm so mad. Believe me. But it doesn't matter. Ali Unyas has been at the spot for almost a decade, selling framed photographs of celebrities in the New York skyline. I feed my family from the seven. I asked him exactly what he saw on Saturday evening. So um, Saturday, this is my walker. Like you see this, um, I have a customer that she's lady. Um, when I sell her already, so I try to get the bag. When I tried to get the bag, I took the bag there already, I see the car smoking. I told her, see this car is smoking. So I give her the her picture and then I ground, go back to my table, uh, behind the table. I see this car is more smoking. I try to go to the uh, phone to try to call, make phone call. I told the Langs, this car is smoking. I'm going to call 911. Langs, he told me, don't call. The cop is right here in the corner. When you go there, he's there. So I try to go to the corner, the cops, to get the cops. Before I go get the cop, the bullet, he go there. He went there before I go. So I try, I, I'm standing here. He explain, uh, tell the cop already. So me and bullet and cop, we come together. And uh, so, like, we standing, cop call uh, 911, firemen, everybody coming. Like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, they tell us to move down over there. We leave our, our mask in the cell. And you didn't see anyone in the car? No, I don't see anyone. That time, my brother, he's coming to see inside the car, but he told me I don't see nothing. It's dark, that's why they tell me, but I'm not, I'm not coming to the car. I'm trying to get the cup or make a phone call. And you just saw smoke coming out of the yeah. car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you told your friend over there, Lance? Yeah. I told him, I told Mohammed also, like my brother, my cousin, I mean. I told both of them. When Aliyun returned to his spot the next morning, he was briefly questioned by the police. What did the police ask you when they questioned you? Later? Yeah, they asked me, um, you see that you saw the guy when he come out of the car? He, I said no. He asked me how you see the car, like same question you asked me, he asked me. I answer. he took my license number and my address and my phone number. So they tell me, if I need you, I'm going to call you. Have yeah. you been contacted by the police no, or yet. anyone, any law enforcement agencies? Not yet, not yet. 
You're from Senegal? Yeah, I'm from Senegal, yeah. You're a Muslim? Yeah, I'm Muslim. What I asked Ali Nias what his reaction was when he found out the suspect in the attempted bombing is a Muslim American born in Pakistan. Yeah, is that not religion? Because the Islam religion is not tourist. They, because if I know this guy is Muslim, he do that. If I know that, I'm going to catch him before he run away. How do you think Muslims are generally perceived in New York by police, by law enforcement, when it comes to investigations yeah, like, into terrorism cases? One person bad, they're going to say everybody for this relation. That is, I think, wrong. Aliyun's not waiting for a call from the president, but is one of the first people to notice and speak out about the smoke rising from the SUV. He does want some recognition that a Muslim immigrant from Senegal might also be counted among the eyes and ears of New York City. That report by Democracy Now!'s Anjali Comet from Times Square.